With orthographic projection, the view volume we project into the CVV is an axis aligned box. All right, so we're just visualizing that here, just an axis aligned box, and we're remapping the contents of this box into the CVV. This view volume is defined by six planes, right? So we've got the near plane, the far plane, which is gonna be behind here, uh, right, of course, left is on the other side, top and bottom, uh, defining the uh, lower extent of that view volume. Now the CVV bounds can vary between graphics implementations. However, again, for the sake of example here, we'll consider this CVV to extend, let's get that orange color, uh, to, to extend from negative one, negative one, zero, that'll be this bottom corner right down here, up to uh, one, one, one. So again, we'll use the same example we used in the last video as the, uh, the, the boundaries of the CVV. Now, the thing to remember with orthographic projection is that we don't give any special consideration to the distance of objects from the camera. All right, so objects farther away from the camera do not appear smaller than objects closer to the camera. When ultimately we use the X and Y coordinates of the components in the CVV to transform them into screen space, it will be essentially as if we just dropped the Z coordinate altogether. All right, this is the nature of orthographic projection. And a, a good way to visualize what's happening with this type of projection is to understand that as the name suggests, all orthogonal lines in the view volume, let's put, let's put a 90 degree angle there, right? So, so all orthogonal lines in the view volume remain orthogonal once projected into the CVV. This type of projection is commonly used in 3D modeling applications when we need to see the components of a model without having their appearance distorted by perspective projection, right? So the, maybe the front camera here in Maya, the side camera, the top camera, these are all examples of cameras using orthographic projection. And of course, we can clearly see the results here of using this this type of projection, right? I've got uh, you know the two cubes here. They are the same size. Uh, however, this cube is shoved a considerable distance along the z-axis. Well, let's consider how these objects appear when viewed using perspective projection, right? So obviously, this object in the distance is considerably smaller than the one up close. However, if I just go ahead and switch to the front camera here we can see that, well, because they're actually the same size in reality, uh, when we do not take into consideration any depth information here, the objects appear to be the same size. Right, there is no consideration for the distance of the object to the camera. So to achieve this type of projection, we need to obtain a matrix, or multiple matrices, in fact, which describe the transformation of any point from the camera's view volume into the CVV. In terms of orthographic projection, we can begin by visually imagining what the process should actually entail. Uh, first, a translation to move the contents of the view volume to origin, which is where the CVV begins. All right, so let's just visualize that translation, right? We're just literally moving everything in the view volume uh, to, you know, around what's origin here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is a scale. Just, just a normal scale transformation to resize the contents of the scene such that it fits inside the CVV, right? And so if we actually think about those two transformations together and think about what they actually accomplish, we'll, uh, we'll realize that, well, in essence, this has actually uh, remapped every, every set of coordinates from uh, camera space here, wherever they happen to be, we've remapped those coordinates such that we can describe them as uh, uh, values belonging in the range that the CVV uses. Therefore, we obtain two matrices, all right? So this one right over here being for the translation along the z-axis, covering the distance 
to the near plane, all right? And, and using what we've already learned about translations and, and homogeneous matrices, right? We can see, just by taking a look at this right-hand column here, we can see that, well, we are translating zero on the X, zero on the Y, but negative N, right? We are, we are translating coordinates along the negative direction uh, for the Z axis and covering the distance to the near plane. Uh, so so this, this matrix should make perfect sense here in terms of uh, accomplishing our translation. And then the other matrix we obtain being for the scaling operation, right? And, and again, just thinking back to what we've learned about uh, the, the matrix used for doing a scaling transformation, of course, in homogeneous form here, using this four by four matrix, we can see that this is indeed a scaling matrix. We have a certain scaling factor for X, Y, and Z. And uh, well, it, in just a moment here, we'll talk about what these values actually mean. All right, so for the X scale, we multiply the incoming coordinates by two, divided by the distance from left to right planes, remapping the value, right? Remapping the incoming value to the range uh, negative one to one, all right? And, and of course, we, we know that that is, that is the range we're working with here, at least in terms of X coordinates in the CBV. We do the same for the Y coordinates. However, of course, for, for this vertical axis, we are considering the top and bottom planes of the view volume. For the Z coordinates, it is a similar process. However, uh, again, just thinking back to the dimensions of the CVV, uh, we'll recall that we are transforming into the range zero to one. Uh, right, so in this case, we only scale by one divided by the distance from near to far planes. Now, this scale operation is a generic transformation which allows for off-center projections. However, most of the time, a more specific projection is used. All right, so I mean, even just taking a look at this uh, really simple drawing here, uh, usually the camera's view volume as well as the CVV are aligned on the X and Y axis and positioned right at origin. Uh, we, we also usually want the camera's field of view to the right to equal the field of view to the left, all right? And the, the same to be true for the vertical axis, right? So the, the field of view to the top uh, being equal to the field of view to the bottom. All right, so what this means is that we can eliminate, in, in most situations, we actually can eliminate the uh, left, right, and top, bottom definitions for the view volume and simply describe it as width and height with both volumes positioned at, of course, width divided by two. That would put it, that would put us right in the center here and height divided by two. That would also align, uh, align it right at uh, right at origin here. And finally, by multiplying the two matrices together, we can obtain a single transformation matrix, which will perform this orthographic projection into the CVV. All right, so uh, let's let's first just observe uh, here is here is the generalization of width, right? Eliminating uh, the right and left plane definitions. We are just, uh, we are just uh, you know, d dividing by width in this case. Same deal for top and bottom. We're, we're assuming here that uh, the, the, the field of view to the top is the same as the field of view to the bottom. Therefore, uh, we can just describe the height of the view volume with a single variable. Here's our, here's our one over F minus N. And then we can see here as a result of the matrix multiplication, uh, we do have, we do have um, this, this Z uh, translation term written out here, of course, divided by F minus N, just as a result of the, multiple, the matrix multiplication. And uh, of course, still that, that value of one in the, uh, the W component for this final, uh, for the, for this final column. All right, so this is the, the final projection matrix 
for orthographic projection. And so to finish off here, let's actually do some of those calculations presented in the matrices. Let's just do them in a in, in a spreadsheet here. And I've I kind of broken stuff out so that we can we can see you know what's happening for x coordinates, let's say, as well as what's happening for z coordinates. Uh, you know, for the x and y coordinates, it's the same process. So I've just simplified this here so that we can we can plug in some values for an x coordinate and see how the depth or the z value of that coordinate would affect it. All right. Well, of course, we're doing orthographic projection here, so we're not going to see an impact on the x or y coordinates uh, due to uh, depth. However, uh, let's, you know, let's just take a look at these calculations so that we can later on compare these to what happens with perspective projection. So I have defined my uh, left and right planes of the view volume here as negative five units on the left, right five units on the right here. Of course, this is along the x-axis. And let's consider, let's consider a point, of course, in, in camera space where we're trying to, we're trying to transform this camera coordinate into the CBV. So, so let's consider the X coordinate of a point in camera space and see what happens when it is transformed. All right, so transforming into uh, the CBV where the left plane is, well, it, it, it's now an, a value of negative one. It, it, the left plane is defined at negative one on the X axis. The right plane is defined at one on the X axis. Uh, let's see this remapping take place here. So, well, of course, camera camera x coordinate zero will, of course, be uh, it, it it's right in the middle of the uh, the original view volume, so it will remain unchanged, right? It it's going to end up at a coordinate of zero in the CVV. Let's try a an x coordinate of one, and we can see this is this is scaled down and remapped into the range negative one to one, right? So two, two is gonna get squashed into that range, three, uh, four, and so on, right? Until we get to a camera X coordinate of five, right on the right plane of the view volume, it will get scaled down, right? Remapped into the range negative one to one, and therefore end up at the X coordinate of one, exactly on the the, the, the right plane, if you will, of the CVV, all right? And, well, of course, as we saw in the matrices, uh, no translation is performed on the X or Y coordinates. It is irrelevant. We only scale them, all right? So, so that's what happens with orthographic projection for X and Y coordinates. Let's take a look at what happens with Z coordinates. Let's see how they behave. So again, we are considering our near plane of the view volume to be at a, a, a camera coordinate of one, the far plane at a coordinate of five, really just arbitrary values that I just picked for this example. And well, let's see what happens uh, when, we, when we remap the camera Z coordinate of one, which is of course right on the near plane. Let's remap this to the uh, CVV uh, near and far uh, range of, of, of course, zero to one, right? Again, remember, we did define our CVV, its near plane at z equals zero, and the far plane at z equals one. So um, just using the, the, the same calculations present in those matrices, right? Uh, the, we can see here that the camera coordinate of z equals one is first scaled down to 0.25 and well you know that's that looks like a step in the right direction but we're not done yet right right the camera z coordinate of one should be at uh zero should, should be at z equals zero because because it's right on the on the near plane of the view volume so we take this scaled coordinate and then well all we have to do is 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 then apply the translation of negative 0.25 on the z-axis again just following the formula for for how we translate the z-coordinates in that translation matrix all right so so of course uh, 0.25 minus 0.25 will put that that camera z-coordinate right 
at the, uh, the, the near plane of the CVV. Let's try a few other coordinates. Let's try maybe two. So here we have, uh, you know, 0 0.5 minus 0.25. Uh, so that'll that'll give us a proper uh, remapping into this range of Z coordinates. A three, right? Another remapping four, uh, as well as as well as let's consider the camera Z coordinate right at the far plane of the view volume, right at Z equals five. So here we can see that we're scaled to a Z coordinate of one point two five, uh, but of course. We consider this translation here, uh, moving it backwards 0 0.25 units, uh, putting, putting that remapped Z coordinate precisely at Z equals one, uh, sitting on the far plane of the CVV. All right, so uh, a fairly simple uh, you know, visualization here of what's happening with different uh, coordinates when projected orthographically we will do this same sort of exploration of the math when we come to perspective projection as well. And hopefully that'll help us to see how exactly, uh, you know, the, the differences in how they behave.